Okay, let's keep going with our illustrated greeting card. Next, I am going to add a little bit of details to the snowman, including some circles for eyes and the mouth and a carrot nose and some arms. I'm going to get my zoom tool and zoom in here to the head. And you can use your ellipse select um, to make shapes, or you can use the shape tool. So I will do both to show you. Right now I have the ellipse select, and I definitely need to make a brand new layer and put the eyes on the brand new layer. When I use the ellipse select, remember that's a selection tool. So right now it's just empty pixels. At this point, I'll need to go to my foreground swatch and choose, I want black. And then either get my paintbrush or my paint bucket and fill it in. All right, so I could continue to do that. Um, so now I've already made one eye. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. So I could either duplicate the layer or here's the duplicate shortcut. I'm just going to get my move tool, hold down alt or option on your keyboard and drag the duplicate all right now in photopea the duplicate is they are both on the same layer so i'm going to go ahead and name that eyes if this was photoshop the duplicate would go it would make itself a a, um, a brand new layer all right i'm going to go to select deselect so that that's no longer selected all right, now I'm going to do it with the ellipse tool so you see the difference. So here's the ellipse tool. And remember, the ellipse tool makes vector shapes. And that's why right here it says shape. And I need to choose a fill color. I'm going to drop that down and choose black and still have no stroke. All right, now with the ellipse tool, I'm going to make a couple of little things for the mouth. I could draw the mouth, but I'm going to go ahead and pretend these are little pieces of coal. Now notice it came up with a brand new shape layer popped up. So when you're using the shape tool, it makes a brand new shape layer each time. So let's say I want to duplicate this. I'll get my move tool, hold down option, click and drag. And now notice it made another layer. They're calling it shape one copy. So that's what happens when you use the shape tool. It makes brand new shape layers. All right, and then I can go back and I'm using my down and up arrows and I can go through the different layers now and select those right away. All right, next I'm gonna make a brand new layer. This is gonna be the nose and I'm gonna make this using the polygonal lasso tool. So with the polygonal lasso, um, it selects pixels, you know, geometrically. So I'm just going to click to set the point for the nose. I'm just going to click to do the tip of the nose. Go back, click. Now go back to the original one, click. So now I have this triangular selection. I'm going to go get an orange color in my foreground swatch and just get my paint bucket and fill that in. Now remember I'm doing it on a new layer so that I can edit this if I want to. All right, I can deselect it and now get my move tool and since it's on its own layer I can just move it around. All right, and I can do um, similar things for the hat. So I'm going to make a little kind of top hat. I'm going to get the ellipse tool again change the fill color to black and I, this you'll see right away it's going to pop up a brand new layer there it is and then i want to do something for the top i'll try out the rectangular shape tool notice it made another new layer now that's very squared off um, i could edit the shape um, what I'm going to do is get what's called the path select and direct select. This white arrow, this direct select, lets me edit the path. See how I can pull now and I can edit that path? I'm using that white, it's called the direct select arrow. 
All right, so I can just play around with the shape, make that kind of more like a rhombus shape. All right, there's my hat. And I would continue, maybe I'll make a little, you know, ribbon around the hat or add some holly berries. Uh, you can give it a drop shadow if you want to make it look like it's coming away from the snowman. All right, I'm going to zoom out and let's do some arms. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso again for the arms. So I'm going to hold down, get the polygonal lasso, and I'm going to make these on a brand new layer. And just using the polygonal lasso, just make some tree branch arms. All right, now that's a selection. I'm going to fill it in with a brown color. So I could paint it or I could get the paint bucket. All right, there's one arm. And I'm next going to make another layer and do that again for the left arm. This right now is selected. So let's go to select, deselect. Get that polygonal lasso again. All right, now it's a selection and get the paint bucket, fill it in and deselect. All right, looking cute. Next, I think that I would like a little border at the top of icicles. I'm gonna use my pen tool and do a similar, pretty much similar thing I did with the snowy hills to make some icicles. So to begin, I'm going to have to make my icicle shape coming down and then trace all the way around to make this one big shape. So I'm going to start in the corner. I'm going to click and release to set an anchor point. By the way, I want to put this on a brand new layer. So I'm going to make a brand new layer and this will be called icicles. Okay, so back to the pen tool. Click to set their anchor. There it is, the blue. And... I kind of want to come out of the edge there. So I'm just going to set another anchor there. And I'm just going to kind of play around. Right now it's getting filled black. Don't worry. I'm going to fill that in with white in a moment. Okay, now notice that it's kind of trying to fill itself while I draw. You just kind of have to get used to this. Okay, I think I'm going to start this one over. So I'm going to drag this to the trash can. And I'm going to start this one over because I had an extra anchor there. So let's do that again. Oh, it happened again. Let's try one more time. All right, so... As you can see, Photopea is a little bit glitchy. And that's okay, I'm just gonna try again. All right, I'll go ahead and start with white. All right, for my icicle shapes, what you sh should see here is I'm just kind of making little drop down shapes some of them are going to be smaller, some of them are going to be longer. I'm also going to be putting some text here in the middle. I'm going to be using the icicles as kind of a frame in a moment. And also, if you, you know, don't have the hang of the pen tool yet, it's not a problem because in a moment I'm going to show you how to go back and adjust and edit. All right, so for now I've got kind of my row of icicles. Now I need to trace all the way back to that original anchor. So I'm going to follow the outer edge here. Now it's one big shape. 
Okay, I'm not exactly happy with those. So I'm going to go back to my black and white arrows here. Now, path select selects the whole path. Direct select lets you edit specific anchors. So notice now I can grab these anchors and I can pull. I can pull the direction handle and edit. Okay, that's kind of fun. I could also make it bigger. So I could go to edit free transform and I could play around with, you know, making it bigger or getting some of them off the picture plane. All right, now I would also like to give it that snowy texture and the drop shadow, just like I did for the hills. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the snow texture. Here it is. And I'm going to go to layer, duplicate layer. And then I'm going to drag that all the way up to the top on top of my icicles. And right now there is a clipping mask, so it is the snowy texture on top of the icicles, but I can't really see them because it needs, the icicle layer needs the drop shadow. Layer, layer style, drop shadow. All right, I've got that default setting on there, so I'll click OK. And then when you click away, you can see there's my icicles. Oh, we lost my hat. Where'd my hat go? All right, looks like the hat got deleted somehow. Let's go put that, put that back on there. All right, next I'm going to add some text. I would like to use a new font. I am going to go to defont.com. All right, just one moment. All right, I clicked on, I went to defont.com and I clicked on the script handwritten. And I do like this font right here. So I'm going to click download and wait for that to download to my downloads folder. And it's zipped, so I'm gonna put it on my desktop, double click it, there's the font right there, you can see it. And the extension says .otf, that is good, that's a good extension. I'm gonna double click on this file and let it open up and click install font. All right, next, I am going to remember the name. It's called Homework. And I'm going to go back to Photopea. I'm going to go to my Type tool, drop down my fonts, and let's double check and see that it was installed. Look for it by name.
Hmm. And I don't see it yet, so maybe that one didn't work for Photopea. And that might happen. All right, for the moment, I am going to choose a different font and just play around with it. All right, I'm going to click to set my cursor. Right now, 24 pixels. Let's make that a lot bigger so I can see it. There it is. And I'm going to type in Happy Holidays. Okay, now it's time to play around with my text. Um, let's see what white looks like. All right, and I think that I would like to play around with this, maybe give it a stroke. Let's go to layer, layer style, stroke. And right now it had a red stroke. Let's give it a black stroke instead. Okay. Hmm. That looks all right. What if I gave it um, the same color? Notice it's popped up some of the colors I've used in my document. What if I gave it that color? All right. That doesn't stand out exactly as much as I would like it. So let's go with maybe a dark blue to a gray. Okay, right now the size of the stroke is three and it's on the outside. See if I make it bigger, you can see it. All right, so this font is kind of a fun font and kind of boxy and I can play around with the placement of it. Do I want it under the icicles? Do I want to make it bigger or smaller? Um, I'm going to try stacking it. So I'm going to get rid of this. And so now you can see it says happy right there. I want to make a brand new layer for holidays. So now I'm going to click with the type tool again. All right. And I'm just going to play around with its placement. So now I need that stroke again. Layer, layer style, stroke. All right, the default color is still there and it's five pixels. All right, now that they're on separate layers, I can play around with them individually. All right, do I like that? Maybe I could put them back the way that I had them. All right, you can also warp your text. So I'm back in the type tool and I'm going to select it. Notice there's this warp right here. And I can do things like choose a style, like an arc or a flag or a wave, fisheye, twist. All right, there's the arc. You can play around with how much it bends. Okay, and I could do the same thing for this holidays. Maybe I want to warp that kind of to the shape of the snow hill. All right, so lots of things I could do here. I could make these bigger, I could make them smaller, I could change their color. Um, I think I might add some, you know, falling snow, maybe a red scarf. All right, that's it for part two.